So, well, first of all, so why, you know, why do this kind of thing in the, in the first place? Um, this is a case where we're looking specifically at negative eigenvalues, okay? Lambda less than zero, okay? And we may be interested in if there's any, um, you know, decaying, decaying components uh, of our, of our uh, eigenfunctions. And we might be interested in how many eigenfunctions we have associated with uh, the decaying components of our solution. Um, so yes, in this case, you, um, the, the approach is really just to plug this assumption into your, um, into your ODE and then also your boundary conditions and to see if you can get uh, some relationship that tells you what uh, K should be in this case or how many solutions K you should have, okay? So the first thing you should do is just to plug in to the ODE, right? So, so what happens when I do that? Well, I have V prime prime minus K squared V is equal to zero in this case right and so uh i have v um prime prime is equal to k squared v and the solutions to this are v equals um, a e to the kx plus b e to the minus kx okay and let me, sorry, let me correct something I said before, right? Remember way back in the, in the problem here, right? What we've written down before, right? We, we made the assumption that this was minus K. So what's gonna happen is that, uh, sorry, this is minus Lambda. So what's gonna happen is if we plug this back in over here, if, if lambda is negative, we're going to get time-dependent functions that grow. So what, sorry, what we're really interested in here is if we're going to have any eigen solutions that will uh, possibly grow in time, which is, you know, bad for the stability of the problem, okay? So you want to see what are, what are conditions of the problem essentially where we get growing Fourier modes that could, uh, you know, potentially lead to unstable solutions. So that's the reason to look for eigenvalues like this that would be negative because they'll actually turn into positive growth for our time dependent functions, okay? So fine, so the, so the, the focus is on, you know, when can I actually solve this equation with this assumption? I know that I have solutions that look like this, they're just exponential functions. If I now apply my boundary condition, right, then what I end up with is um, K A E to the um, uh, K zero, which is just one, right, minus now A, So yeah, so if I plug this in, I get B times minus K here, minus A zero, um, A plus B. And this is all equal to zero. So, noting that um, I can uh, solve this for how A and B relate to each other. I get A is equal to K plus A zero divided by K minus A zero times B, okay? So now I have a restriction on these free constants in front of my exponentials. 
The next thing I can do is plug into my other boundary condition. And I end up with Ka now e to the Kl minus Kb e to the minus Kl plus Al Ae to the Kl plus B e to the minus Kl. And again, this is equal to zero. Okay. So now we start to get kind of a mess if we if we plug this in, but let's work through it. Okay. So if I replace A here with what I have for B, okay, then I can um, I can basically remove the dependence on B from my equation because I'll have a common factor of B everywhere. Okay. So if I plug in B here, right, I get K times K plus A zero divided by K minus A zero B E to the KL, right, minus K B E to the minus KL plus A L K plus A zero minus K minus A zero B E to the KL plus A L B E to the minus K L equals zero. Okay. So either B equals zero or I can just divide it out. Okay. So I'm going to divide it out. Okay. And then I'm going to combine like terms, right? I, I can combine the, the prefactors of e to the kl, and I can combine the prefactors of e to the minus kl, and this will um, this will simplify a bit. Okay, so I'm going to do that on the next page. So if I divide by b, okay, and if I combine terms, then I end up with k plus a l k plus a zero k minus a zero e to the k l plus a l minus k times e to the minus k l is equal to zero okay now how do i uh handle this so if i if i multiply through um by this factor here that's dividing us then i'll 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 remove that um i won't have any more fractions essentially in my equation so if i do, if i multiply through by that i get this quadratic polynomial times e to the kl okay I get this times this, okay, which gives me another quadratic polynomial over here, okay, e to the minus kl equals zero. So a bit lengthy there. And uh, now what I can see is that I have a common factor of k squared here. I have a common factor of a zero a l here. Okay. So I can group these terms together e to the k l e to the minus k l. Okay. And I also have a common factor here, right? But here it's going to be positive, and here actually it'll be positive because I have a minus and a minus. So let's move that over to the other side, minus k a l plus a zero, e to the k l plus e to the minus k l, okay? And if I rearrange things a bit, right? I get e to the k l minus e to the minus k l divided by e to the k l plus e to the minus k l, and this is equal to minus k a l plus a zero divided by k squared plus a zero a l okay well what is this thing here you know what that function is tanch and so that's a tanch right 
tangent KL, right? Which is gonna 